Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I live out on this uh, very pleasant uh, field. Uh, lots of little creatures that are uh, running around. Squirrels, and rabbits, and sometimes I see the fox, and there's a deer that comes around every once in a while. Uh, all of the birds. Um, the chorus of birdsong in the morning is wonderful. Um, but then the groundhogs the humble groundhog. And uh, I think at, at most at the same time, I think I've seen five or six groundhogs um, out and about. And they come out of their burrows. Uh, they're, they're, most, they're the most uh, frightful creatures. I love um, being very still and watching them come out of their burrow and uh, stand up on their hind legs and look around and they'll, they'll eat they never get very far from their burrow, and they always pop their head up and look. Um, to me, it's adorable. They get frightened by the bunny rabbits. If a bunny rabbit runs by, um, they just race as best as they can with their weird little bodies. Uh, they race back to their burrows. And I love these groundhogs. Uh, groundhogs get a bad reputation for um, endangering livestock and um, horses and cattle that um, uh, could collapse underfoot of um, an animal and um, injure, injure their legs. Um, but there's no livestock around here. They have their burrows. Um, and I, I just think they're the most fascinating little creatures because they run into that burrow and they're in there. And uh, I read the burrow by Kafka, this amazing cover. Just look at that. Fantastic cover design by Penguin. And I don't believe um, the, the, the creature in the, in the short story, the burrow, is ever uh, specifically mentioned, much like the metamorphosis, uh, where it's just a vermin or a bug um, instead of any sort of specific animal. And it's the story of a, a burrowing creature, um, I like to think a little groundhog, um, living in his burrow. And it's a, a first person um, interior monologue of um, the thoughts and, and life of um, a frightful uh, but very busy and concerned uh, little groundhog. And when we enter his mind, um, he's thinking about um, the burrow that he has uh, worked so hard to construct, and all of the tunnels, and how the entrance works, and um, little spaces that are a little bit more uh, luxurious, areas where you can um, stretch out, stretch his limbs, and all of the hard work that he had to put into building building his burrow and um, future plans that he has if he had all the time in the world if he was a younger groundhog um, what he would do differently or additions that he would put on currently um, we get descriptions of how he builds his little burrow um, and there's very little plot to think of we, we do get <clears throat> we do get um, the concerns of what a groundhog might think through the day um, and it's the plot that um, if groundhogs were reading this they might be riveted but uh, humans wouldn't be riveted um, he leaves his his burrow he goes out of his entrance um, and he spends time just um, not guarding but watching his entrance he describes how he keeps it disguised, goes through uh, defensive um, camouflage tactics that he's thought about, um, considered having two burrows that connect, and how he would have an escape point, but then it would also mean uh, twice the risk of an intruder, uh, fake burrows, and this little groundhog is just watching the burrow, and while he's watching it and seeing that there's no creatures coming by, 
He dreams of the perfect burrow. So the little groundhog is dreaming. Um, finally, he goes back into his groundhog, uh, groundhog uh, burrow. And there's a looming nightmarish uh, fear that starts building up throughout the story. And it's a sound. The groundhog is uh, in the earth because he's also concerned about other burrowing animals. Uh, we get his, we get his um, creature-like mindset when he talks about having to attack other animals and claw them. Um, but he's hearing a sound and he knows it's coming through uh, the earth, but he can't get um, a, a specific direction in which the sound is coming from. He's going through his burrow and it sounds like it's coming from every direction. This paranoia is building and building and building. And uh, we don't get a satisfying conclusion. So it, it, it turns itself into a bit of a, a horror story. What I'm so impressed with um, when I read uh, Kafka in general, there, there's the term uh, Kafka-esque. So it's the, this idea of um, the absurd and um, uh, unnecessary restrictions that are put on um, characters. And may maybe not so much with his novels uh, in some aspects, but in his short stories, there, there is um, a Kafka-esque element um, that I think about when I'm, when I'm reading these stories, which is that, that there is the absurd. But the, the absurd piece that twists on the story um, is treated seriously, and it's a buy-in. So when you start uh, the metamorphosis, or the burrow, or in the penal colony, or the hunger artists, or so many of these short stories, there's going to be some absurd element um, that is then going to be treated realistically. It's going to be treated seriously and realistically. What, how, how would this play out in a real scenario where everything else is going to be normal except for this one thing? So um, a man wakes up one day and he's a gigantic cockroach. Um, he doesn't become uh, a superhero or a comic book villain and run around town seeking revenge as a cockroach. Instead, he's worried about um, getting to work. He's worried about how do his little limbs work. He can't get off of his back. His, his family is banging on the door. And it's, it's a matter of everything else has stayed the same. What are the realistic consequences of this one absurd event? And in the penal colony, uh, we have this man um, bragging to a traveler about this highly ornate, complicated, and dilapidated torture device. He's bragging about how all these knives uh, carve into um, uh, these complicated scripts into, into the body, and it's the, um, the, the knives write out the, the sin of the person, and um, the, the, the person that's uh, speaking telling us about this complicated uh, torture machine is very happy and uh, proud, kind of bragging about this thing, talking about how the town doesn't like it. Um, and then in the end, while he's, the, the, the speaker is now in this thing, it breaks down and um, uh, ruins the, the beautiful, sacrificial, um, torturous suffering that was going to come about. Um, and I think about that when I'm reading this story, it's that, um, what's the life, like, what's the, what's the mind of a, of a little groundhog? And what do they think about? And what if we take that seriously and, um, work on it to its logical extreme? And, uh, there's parts that are quite delightful. There's parts that are, um, very strange and horrifying. Uh, but you do get the sense of what's going on when that little groundhog rushes 
into the hedgerow and shoots down his burrow. What might he be thinking? Uh, so, and then actually this is titled uh, The Burrow, other, other short stories. Uh, let me know if you've read it. Let me know um, other Kafka stories that you might like. And thank you for watching and take care.